good morning. Welcome to Children's Church. It's lovely to be with you this morning. So I wonder how you're enjoying Kids Church over the summer. It's a little bit scaled back, but we've had some great stories. Um, I love Sally last week with Corny. That was hilarious. Corny and Sally had a great time, didn't they, talking about Elijah. So this week we're doing something a bit different. So we're starting off a series looking at parables and parables are amazing stories that Jesus told us that had an extra deeper meaning that you had to kind of look for and think about and chew on and try to work out. And they were great stories. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a story that I absolutely loved growing up. This was my favorite story. And I loved this story. I don't know if any of you read any of Dr. Zeus's stories, The Cat in the Hat, um, The Grinch That Stole, Stole Christmas books like that. Now this one's called Green Eggs and Ham and I learned the whole of this book so that I could just recite the whole thing. I could just say the whole thing without looking. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my childhood. Anyway, I love this book because it was really fun. It was really quirky and it's all about a man. Here he is, a chap or strange creature. I don't know if you can see that. And a little lad called Sam and Sam is desperately trying to get this funny looking chap to eat green eggs and ham. They look disgusting. I wonder if you've ever tried to eat something you didn't like the look of. And he tries and he tries and he hates it. And in the end, right at the end of the book, after he's really said no to Sam a lot of times, he says, I'll read the last page to you, he says, he tries the green eggs and ham in the end and he says, I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam, I am. So if any of you want to borrow that book, you're very welcome to. So the deeper story in that book is all about trying new things, things that you don't think you'll like, like funny foods, and then in the end, discovering that you really, really like them. So in a moment, we're going to play a game about food. Now, Ella and I keep doing things with food, <laughs> but this is gonna be a nice, fun thing. And the story today is all about the prodigal son. So it's a son who lives with his dad and he's got a brother and they live on a farm and they eat really good food and they have lots of really good stuff, but he decides that he just wants to go and leave his dad and go and explore the world and do his own thing and he loses all his money and he ends up eating really disgusting things. And then he comes back home and there's a great big party. So it's a really good story. So we are gonna do a bit of a challenge in a moment. So I've got Ella and Nathan here and they have agreed to do the cake challenge. Now, they're gonna start in a minute, but I'm gonna let them just put the first icing on to begin with. And then they're gonna have a bit of a, a minute to decorate it and whoever, decorates it the best is going to win the challenge. So the reason we're doing this is because we're looking at the prodigal son this morning and the prodigal son, as I just said, had a lovely family, had everything he wanted and he, and then he wanted to, he was wanting something else. So he asked his dad for all his money and he went off into the world and left his family and he spent all his money and he had no friends. And then he ended up eating pig food, so all the rubbish, everything that's in the compost bin, basically, he ate that. And that was the best he could get. That's disgusting, isn't it? And then when he finally went home, his dad threw him the most amazing party, and I bet there was cake there. So we're gonna decorate these cakes um, to think about that amazing party that his dad threw. And that's a bit like God, isn't it? When we go back to God, when we remember him and give him our love again, when we've maybe forgotten about him for a bit, he is so excited to have us back and he wraps his arms around us and he throws a big party. So we're gonna think about that with our decorating cakes. So I think we're nearly ready to start. Are you guys ready to start? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Okay. So Craig's on the timer. You have one minute. Ready, steady, go. And now I know Ella has given me a little bit of a warning of what she's going to make. And it's ambitious, I have to say. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. There's squirty cream. Now, I don't know if you can see what they have on offer. They have like the most amazing selection of sprinkles you could ever want for, and they've got chocolate frosting, they've got but buttercream frosting, they've got strawberries, they've got whippy cream, they've got writing icing, they've got toothpicks, 
They've got even little llamas to put on llamas. I'll show you a llama. They can put these guys on if they want to, so it's a lot of fun. Right, where are we on the timer, Craig? Uh, 45 seconds. What? Are we 45 seconds in or 40 to go. Oh, 45 seconds to go. Okay, so like quite a lot of time, guys. So, oh, Ella's doing lots of cream and strawberries. I don't think you're going with your original plan, are you, Ella? No, no, she's abandoned. So her original plan was to actually create the Mona Lisa as a cake. I'm just, it was ambitious. I have to, I would have liked to have seen that, quite honestly. So, oh, Nathan, Nathan's got some upright creatures and things on his cake. That's looking good. Seconds. 15 seconds, guys. Come on, go for it. Throw it, throw it on. Ten. Oh. They're being quite Five, careful, aren't they? Four, They're being... Three, two, one. Time. Oh my goodness. Okay, Craig, can you can you zoom in on each of these cakes for two seconds? Or maybe we could just lift them up, lift them up. So there we go. That's the timer still going off. Oh, there we go. That way up and that way up. So Ella's got... Ella, can you describe your cake? So there's a whiskey cream and strawberries and then there's a little smiley face in the middle. Oh, there, so she did get the Mona Lisa in. There we go. And Nathan, do you describe your cake, Nathan? Sprinkles on it. <laughs> Very much. And he got the llamas and the cactus on. So which one do you think is the winning cake? Oh, Ella's quite symmetric, quite light. It's got some fruit on it, so it's got the health factor. Nathan has just gone for sugar and bling, I feel. So, <laughs> oh, it's so hard to choose. Which one are you going for, Craig? I'm going to go for Nathan's, I think. Ah, why? Um, I like the cacti on top. I like mm. the idea of eating a llama. With mm. cacti. I'm into fruit, quite honestly. So I think it's a 50 50 split. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe we have to taste them to decide. So thanks, guys. That was really fun. We're going to eat those in a minute. So just to say, we're going to have some worship, and then we've got. Um, the Reese Haywards are doing the story today and then we've got the ask it up question so a question for you guys to ask your grown-ups and to have a little chat about God uh, okay bye Once upon a time, there was a boy and his dad. Now, one day, the boy gets to thinking. Maybe if I didn't have my dad around telling me what is good for me all the time, I'd be happier. He's spoiling my fun, he thinks. Does my dad really want me to be happy? Does my dad really love me? The son never thought of that before. But suddenly, he doesn't know anymore. So the son goes to the father and says, Dad, I'm better off without you. 
I can look after myself. Just give me my share of your money. His father is sad, but he won't force the boy to stay. So he gives the son what he wants. The son takes the money and goes on his way. He goes on a long, long journey to a far off country and everything's wonderful and perfect for a while. He can go wherever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. He can be whoever he wants. He is the boss. He is free. Sometimes he gets a strange, homesick feeling inside his heart. But then he just eats more. Or he drinks more. Or he goes to more parties until the feeling goes away. But soon his money runs out and so do his friends. He ends up getting the only job he can find, feeding the pigs. One day he is so desperate and so hungry he even tries some piggy food what am i doing he spits it out yuck yuck my father is rich and here i am in a pigsty eating piggy food he wipes his mouth and dusts himself off i'm Going home, he says. As he starts for home, though, he begins to worry. Dad won't love me anymore. I've been too bad. He won't want me for his son anymore. But all this time, what he doesn't know is that day after day, his dad has been standing on the porch straining his eyes, looking into the distance and waiting for his son to come home. He just can't stop loving him. He longs for the sound of his boy's voice. He can't be happy until he gets him back. The sun is still a long way off, but his dad sees him coming. What will the dad do? Shout, that'll teach you. Just you wait. No, that is not how this story goes. The dad leaps off the porch. He races down the hill, through the little gap in the hedge, all the way up the road. Before his son can even begin his I'm sorry speech, his dad runs to him, throws his arms around him and can't stop kissing him. My boy's home. I lost him, but now I have him back. Let's have a party, he shouts. Jesus told them, God is like the dad who couldn't stop loving his boy. And people are like the son who said, does my dad really want me to be happy? Jesus told people this story to show them what God is like and to show people what they are like so that they could know, however far they run, however well they hide, however lost they are, it wouldn't matter, because God's children can never run too far, or be too lost for God to find them. So I was just thinking about um, what the son felt like when he went back to his dad and he kind of said, I really messed up. I've done some terrible things. I'm kind of sorry, Dad, for all the things I've done. And he didn't expect very much, but his father just loved him and threw his arms around him and celebrated. And I guess that's a bit 
like what happens when we say sorry, when, especially when we say sorry to God. Um, and I wonder how that makes us feel. I wonder how that boy felt. I wonder if he felt totally relieved and he felt really deeply loved and just, uh, yeah, just total relief. So this is your question for your grown-ups. So you could ask your grown-ups, how do you feel when God forgives you? What does that make you feel like? For this week, why don't you make a prayer paper chain so you can write your prayers on each chain. You could say a sorry to God for something you've done, just like that son had to say sorry to his dad. You could write your sorries, turn it into a paper chain and then celebrate. You've made something beautiful out of a sorry. So, um, yeah, so thanks for being with us today. That's the end of Kids Church. I hope you enjoyed it. Ella, Ella just can't stop. She's actually making an absolute masterpiece on the end of here. And Nathan's evolved, so he couldn't stop either. So um, a lot of fun today. And I hope you remember that God absolutely loves us. And even if we forget about him, and even if we go and do silly things, he always loves us and always welcomes us back. So I hope you uh, remember that always. So I don't know about you, but I can't resist a bit of whippy cream. <gasps> now you're lucky I'm not just putting this straight in my mouth. That is for me. Bye.